Autism is well known as a disorder in which there are these sort of complex changes in behavior. So, for example, there are alterations in the language abilities of these individuals. They show various kinds of stereotyped behaviors, repeating the same behavior over and over again. And of course, there are difficulties in the manner of the social interaction that uh, such individuals engage in. So the main goal of, of this project was to determine the reliability of neural responses in autism, and in particular in, in sensory areas. Um, so we looked at auditory, somatosensory, and visual systems. And uh, the question we had was whether the consistency of the response across trials was uh, any different than the group with autism in comparison to the control group? What we were particularly interested in is trying to understand at a much more foundational uh, neurobiological level what might potentially give rise to this um, sort of profile of altered behaviors. And so instead of looking at these complex behaviors, we wanted to quantify at a much more fundamental level the neural responses, the pattern of uh, cortical activation in individuals with autism compared to um, typically developing individuals. And so we had adults uh, with autism in the magnet and essentially we looked at the way the most elemental part of cortex, primary cortices, respond to very simple stimuli. And in so doing, any alteration that we see in these cortical responses would be a very powerful indication of the um, differences between individuals with uh, autism and the typical controls. And so the measure that we used here was to examine um, the um, the similarity of the neural response, trial after trial. So in typical individuals, every time they see the same visual stimulus, there is almost an identical response of the early visual system. You drive the visual system, the stimulus drives the visual system in, in the same way. So the question is whether you see the same kind of um, a sort of normative, consistent response in individuals with autism, trial after trial. The, the main finding of the paper was that there was a difference across the groups and, and that the individuals with autism had less reliability. And uh, when we quantified it, it seemed to be on the order of like 30 or 40 percent, um, in, in the sense that the responses are noisier or less consistent. It turns out that even in primary cortices, primary visual cortex, primary auditory cortex, primary somatosensory cortex, you do not see the typical response sort of locked trial after trial, you know, clean, um, uh, precise response um, evoked by the stimulus. Instead, what you see is a lot of variability, sometimes a strong response, sometimes a weak response. Um, and when you take the average of all of those, the response is um, reasonably strong in visual cortex. It just turns out that on individual trials, the responses are kind of all over the show. And this was a really important result and suggests that there is something very fundamental that is altered in the cortical responses in individuals with autism. So one of the particularly interesting aspects of this research is that it begins to allow us to build a bridge between the kind of genetic um, changes that might have given rise to autism in the first place and the kind of changes in the brain as a result of the genetic alteration and the emerging behavioral pattern, the phenotype. So um, we know from the genetic research that many of the neurobiological changes that occur in autism um, have to do with changes at the synapse and the way that the information is transmitted from one neuron to another. This kind of change may be exactly what's giving rise to this inconsistency in the neural responses in sensory cortices that we're observing. And so it is potentially the case that this research opens up a new window, uh, offers us a new opportunity to look at the bridge between the underlying um, physiology and the emerging um, 
the complexity in the emergent behavioral pattern in autism. So we started out working with adults in the MRI machine and now we're running a follow-up experiment using EEG, which will give us some more um, temporal details about, about the neural responses. And the question that we're following up with is sort of what are the, the particular details of this unreliable response in terms of its timing, um, which is something that's harder to do with fMRI and easier to do with EEG. And we're going to take this further and look at, at also younger age groups. It potentially cracks open a new avenue of research which will be highly informative mm -hmm. in understanding the bridge between the neurophysiology and the behavioral phenomena in autism.